As a high school teacher, uh, visiting her class in the fall uh, was just a breath of fresh air, nothing disparaging at all against high school students, but uh, to, to that energy and that excitement um, from the, the first graders, uh, it, it was pal palpable and it was just incredible uh, and, and really moving, to, to be quite honest. Um, you can sense the excitement the moment you walk in the door. And it's clear that her students love learning. Erin makes it intriguing and engaging and inspirational and memorable, all the while encouraging and supporting her students. Most importantly, and it is quite clear to anyone who watches her teach, Erin's students know that she believes in them. Please welcome the 2018 United Teacher of the Year, Erin Burke. While well, being a teacher of the year is a professional accomplishment, I had no idea how much personal growth would be involved in this process. I am amazed by the number of things I have done, the fears I have overcome, and the many, many firsts I have experienced due to this recognition. Some of the things I am most proud of accomplishing will seem like very minor things to many of you. However, to me, these are milestones I would never have met if I was not the Connecticut Teacher of the Year. First, I flew in a plane. <laughs> Flying has been one of my biggest fears for a long time. When Kim told me I had been chosen as the Connecticut Teacher of the Year, one of the first things I said to her was, oh no, I'm going to have to get on a plane, aren't I? And this wasn't just a little flight either. I flew across the country by myself. I had never even seen the inside of an airport other than in the movies before I attended the induction program in San Francisco. To help me prepare for this, my friends made me maps of the airports, complete with numbered steps of where I needed to go in each one. As I had a layover in Charlotte, they even marked restaurants with gluten-free menus on the maps for me. You can imagine the fear that set in when my flight was changed hours before departure due to a delay. And I found out I would be flying to O'Hare instead of Charlotte. My husband helped me out by driving me to Bradley, walking me through checking in, and watching me go through security before leaving me at the airport. While going through security, I got yelled at by TSA for putting too many things in one bin. I also got a pat down because no one told me not to wear a sparkly sweater to the airport. As the agent so eloquently put it, I lit up the screen like a Christmas tree. Once I got to San Francisco, I had to figure out how to get myself out of the airport. I did it wrong. Apparently, you have to go to different exits if you're going to take a car or a shuttle or if you're taking a Lyft driver. I had never used Lyft before either. I did that wrong too. Eventually, I got to my hotel. I was completely exhausted and contemplated just staying in California for the rest of my life so I would not have to fly back. While I prefer cars to planes, I am not a fan of driving to new places either, especially alone. However, due to this amazing honor, I have been pushed out of my comfort zone and traveled all over the state. Driving in Hartford was my Connecticut Everest. I made my husband take the day off from work to drive me to the semifinalist interview. I would have had to just drop out of the running if he hadn't done that for me. Unfortunately, he can't be available to be my driver as much as I would like, and we already know I'm not good at Lyft, so I had to learn to do it myself. Part of this learning was how to navigate a parking garage. I had never done that before either. When I left the first of our cohort meetings, I walked to the garage with David Basso. He asked me which side I parked on as we approached the building. I was proud of myself for remembering the floor number. I had no idea I had to know which side I was on as well. While I still get lost every time I go to the Department of Education, I'm not afraid of driving there anymore. And I am now really good at navigating parking garages. While these may not seem
seem like major events in most people's lives, to me, they were big deals. I feel this whole experience has been a string of big deals. Each of them teaching me, challenging me, and pushing me forward in a new way. What I will take away from this year, whether it be personally or professionally, is an increased capacity. Each time I think I am full and I can't possibly fit in anymore, my capacity increases. I'm able to juggle one more event, or drive someplace new, or as is the case this week, five meetings, two speeches, and a field trip with a one-day turnaround for a week-long trip to Washington, D.C. Being Teacher of the Year has also made me a more confident person. When I was a child, I refused to join 4-H with my brother and sister because I would have to give a demonstration once a year. I was terrified at the idea of speaking in front of people. Several years ago at my sister's wedding, I had to give a maid of honor speech. People thought I was filled with emotion and trying to hold back tears. Truthfully, I was trying to hold back something else as I was completely terrified. Not even a year ago, when I had to deliver my district teacher of the year speech, I thought I was going to faint. Now speaking in public is not so scary. I never thought I would say that. Furthermore, I have always dreaded formal observations. <laughs> even though I have the nicest principal in the world, her last name is Friend, <laughs> I still felt like I forgot everything I knew about teaching as soon as she would walk through the door. However, this year's observation was quite different. I was ready for her. I was even excited to show her the cool NGSS aligned STEAM activities I had created for the class. I was less concerned with being perfect and more interested in what I would learn from the observation. You might be wondering what caused such a drastic change. Well, as any of the other finalists will probably attest to, if you can make it through a final site visit, you can make it through any <laughs> Having 18 people observe you in small groups continuously for two hours, while knowing you are concurrently being discussed in multiple interviews with students, parents, colleagues, and administrators, is a test of strength and stamina. After the observations and interviews are done, you're brought in for a debriefing and a final interview. Hearing the kind things people said about me throughout the day, Meet every dollar I've spent from my own pocket, every weekend I've given up to prep and plan, and every phone call after school with parents worth it. Not every teacher gets to experience hearing the gratitude others have for you, but I hope you all know that even if it isn't stated, it is there. I have never left school feeling as tired, satisfied, or supported as I did that day. Even if I hadn't been named Connecticut Teacher of the Year, that day would go down as the best day of my career. I remember walking out of school that evening feeling like a great teacher, which was something I had never felt before. I'm so grateful for the experiences my students have had due to this honor as well. They have been on TV, in the paper, and even staying on stage at the Bushnell. However, they now truly believe they are celebrities. <laughs> After the announcement in October, we were on every news channel. The next morning, they came into school buzzing. Some asked me if I had seen them on TV. I said, yes, I was on TV too. And they said, you were? <laughs> After performing at the ceremony in November, some were concerned they might get too famous, while others debated which theater they should sing at next. <laughs> During our nonfiction unit in reading, we studied the table of contents in a book about Connecticut. They were not happy when they discovered the page titled Stars from Connecticut was not about them. I told my class I would be meeting the President of the United States next week when I go to D.C. with the other state teachers of the year. One child asked, so you're going to the White House to talk to Donald Trump about us? I just responded, yes, that's exactly why I'm going. I couldn't ask for a better group of children to share this year with, even if their egos are a little more inflated now. Each time I attend a professional development through this program, I immediately find a way to bring it back to them. Whether it be through hands-on artifacts like we discussed at the Mark Twain House, the mood meter from Yale's emotional intelligence training, science experiments from the Exploratorium in San Francisco, 
or ideas I have garnered from the amazing educators that I have met from across this country. The most important thing to me is how I use this experience to better my students. Some days I feel like I'm not meeting my own standards as their teacher because I'm out so frequently. However, I have to remind myself that I'm just doing things differently this year. I've come to realize while I may not be there to be a part of some of my favorite classroom activities, I am enriching, enriching my current and future students' education by increasing my capacity as an educator. One thing I have learned through this process is I cannot predict where my path will take me and how my journey will change me. It has only been six months since being named Connecticut Teacher of the Year, and I am already a more confident, more compassionate, and more capable person. I am grateful to the Teacher of the Year Council and all of its supporters for giving me the most amazing experience I never knew I needed. I look forward to seeing where the rest of 2018 will take all of us and how we will use this opportunity to better the lives of our students. Thank you.